Hello everybody. In a series of lectures on dental caries, this particular lecture is on histopathology of caries and the concept of infected versus the affected dentine. All the data has been taken from the textbook of operative dentistry by Sumita Sandhu. So let's go ahead and watch. On a tooth crown, the caries can be seen and the pits and fissures or on the smooth surfaces. And this caries, it affects first the enamel and then it proceeds to the dentine. Whereas on the root surfaces, the areas which are exposed of the root by gingival recession, they get attacked by caries. Here first the cementum is affected and then the dentine gets involved. Now we will first discuss the microscopic structure of caries in enamel and then the microscopic structure in dentine. Coming first to pit and fissure caries, that is the caries in enamel. Now the caries process begins at the base of the pit. This is the base of the pit. Now the enamel rods beginning at the base of the pit, they fan outwards towards the dentino enamel junction. You can see it, the enamel rods, they're fanning outwards towards the dentino enamel junction. Now the caries follows the path of these enamel rods and it forms a triangular shaped lesion like this. Now this lesion, it has an apex at the bottom of the pit here and the base in the dentino enamel junction. So it's a triangular shaped lesion, apex upwards and base downwards. Now coming to smooth surfaces. Now the caries on the smooth surface begins as an initial area of decalcification. You can see it here and then it advances forward to form a triangular shaped lesion. Now this particular triangular shaped lesion, it has its base on the outer surface. You can see it here and apex towards the dentino enamel junction. So we have a triangular lesion with base on the outer surface and the apex towards the dentino enamel junction. Now here you can see the difference between the pit and fissure caries. It is a triangle with apex upwards and base downwards and smooth surface caries, a triangle with base upwards and apex on the downwards towards the dentino enamel junction. And these are the caries in enamel. Now zones of the enamel caries. Now this is considered to be the advancing front of the lesion. Fine. And different zones can be made out. First is zone 1. You can see it. Then the dark zone which is the zone 2. Then the largest zone which is the body of the lesion is the zone 3. Then the surface of the lesion that is zone 4. Now we can see only this. We do not know about all this which is happening below. Now we will talk about each zone individually. Now in the pyramidal enamel lesion, several zones can be distinguished. Starting from the advancing front of the lesion, which is towards the dentino enamel junction, the zones are zone 1, which is a translucent zone. Now this is the innermost zone. It may or may not be present. It appears to be structureless and it shows about 1.2% loss of mineral content, so very little mineral content. Now second is the dark zone. This zone is almost always present due to which it is referred to as a positive zone. It is formed as a result of demineralization and there is a reduction of 6% mineral content per unit volume. The next is the body of the lesion. It is the largest zone. I hope you remember, we just saw in the diagram. It represents the areas of highest demineralization and there is a reduction of 24% mineral content as compared to normal enamel. So zone 4 is a surface layer. It is the topmost layer. It appears to be relatively less unaffected. It shows only 10% loss of mineral content. However, in this zone, remineralization can occur due to the replacement of ions from the saliva. So now you can see that 
when there is caries on a tooth surface say, and the caries is restricted only to enamel this so many times we you see that the surface of the tooth is intact and that is the surface layer which we saw it is it can remineralize and it that surface appears to be contact, intact but below it there are different zones which are working Now, as the caries it reaches the dentino enamel junction, it rapidly spreads laterally. Now, this is the dentino enamel junction here. Now, once the caries reaches here from this area, it reaches here. It rapidly spreads on a lateral manner. It involves the dentinal tubules and travels through these tubules towards the pulp. Now, since the dentinal tubules from the DEJ concentrate towards the pulp, therefore the lesion formed is triangular and cone-shaped with the base of the cone at the DEJ and the apex pointing towards the pulp. Now, what they are trying to say is that now the dentinal tubules, they travel from here towards the pulp like this and they are concentrating towards the pulp. These dentinal tubules, they are concentrating towards the pulp. So, now as the caries, it starts traveling along the dentinal tubules, the cone-shaped lesion is formed such that the apex of the cone points towards the pulp and the base is at the dentino enamel junction. So, now this will be the picture always in the dentinal caries, whether it is at the pit and fissure or if it is at the smooth surface, wherever it might be, the picture will always be like this. So, so the caries you can see in the pit and fissure, it looks like two triangles present base to base. Now, what are the different zones in the dentinal caries? Now, the zones that can be seen, we can see it, you uh, know, this is the portion that we of the dentine that we are enlarging and we see it here. Now these are the dentinal tubules, the two tubules that we can see. This is a normal dentine, right, area of normal dentine. Then comes zone 1, then there is zone 2, zone 3, zone 4 and zone 5. And this is the most affected, most affected portion of the dentine. Now we'll do it in details. I want all of you to concentrate on the diagram. If you look here, this portion is the dentino enamel junction. This is the normal dentine. So this forms the advancing front of the lesion. When we do cavity preparation, we tend to remove this area in the cavity preparation. So now you've got the picture in your mind. Let's now proceed to each zone individually. We will start from zone 5. Now zone 5 is a zone of decomposed dentine, also known as infected dentine. This area it has the maximum bacteria present in it. Then is zone 4. It's the zone of bacterial invasion. It is also called turbid dentine. Here you can see a lot of bacteria as well. Then we come to zone 3, the zone of decalcification of dentine, also known as transparent dentine. It is this area. Now here the bacterial invasion is slightly less, but you will see that the calcium has, you will see that there is decalcification which has occurred here. Now beyond this comes the zone 2 or the zone of dentinal sclerosis. Now, due to, due to defense mechanism, reparative dentine formation tends to occur in the form of some calcification which is seen here in this area. And we call it a zone of dentinal sclerosis. The next is zone 1. This is a zone of fatty degeneration of tones fiber. Zone 1 and 2 are together known as the subtransparent dentine. You can see some fatty degeneration of tomes fibers is occurring in this area. Now these are the different zones. We will do each of them individually in detail. 
Starting from zone 1, it lies adjacent to the normal dentine. Initially, there is fatty degeneration of the tome's dentinal fibers with deposition of fat globules in these processes. Next is zone 2. In defense response of the pulp to the irritants, there begins to occur calcification of the dentinal tubules. I hope you remember the diagram. It is an attempt to stop the entry of microorganisms resulting in dentinal sclerosis. Now zone 3. Despite the protective response of the pulp, destruction of the dentine continues to occur. There is decalcification of the walls of the dentinal tubules. Now this is a very narrow zone which occurs slightly in advance to the bacterial invasion of the dentinal tubules. Coming to zone 4, following decalcification, the dentinal tubules tend to distend, that means they grow fat as they get packed with microorganisms. As the carious process proceeds, tiny liquefactive foci are formed. Now these foci begin to fuse to ultimately form a large area of destruction. So when destruction occurs there, after decalcification, the organic material it starts getting liquefied and small liquefactive foci are seen which fuse together to form a large area of destruction. Now how is this caused? It is caused by proteolytic enzymes produced by the microorganisms. Now if we check it chemically, you will see that there is little mineral content present and the collagen here is irreversibly denatured. Now this layer has to be removed. Now zone 5, it is the outermost layer adjacent to the dentino enamel junction. It consists of completely decalcified and decomposed dentine and it is filled with bacteria. It shows a large necrotic mask of infected dentine showing no recognizable structure to dentine. Removal of this layer is a must during restorative procedures. Now coming to root caries. Now root caries is seen on the root surfaces exposed to oral environment owing to gingival recession. What happens is that improperly cleaned plaque surfaces, plaque covered root surfaces are more prone to caries attack. Now these root surfaces, since they are rougher than enamel, they have greater tendency to accumulate plaque. Now caries on the root, it appears as a broad front. Here you can see it appears as a broad front and it travels along the sharpest fibers which are placed right angle to the roots. And it, since the outer layer is cementum, it is very thin, it gets rapidly destroyed and it immediately attacks the dentine. It moves along the course of the fibers and it rapidly reaches the pulp infecting it. So pulp exposure chances are very much higher in case of root caries. At this stage, it is important to understand the concept of infected and affected dentine. This concept was given by Fusayama. He reported that carious dentine has two layers, the outer layer infected and the inner layer affected. And it is important that we are able to differentiate between the two layers. Now what do you see in these pictures? Now this is infected dentine. What we observe is it shows an area of dentine which is yellowish white in color it appears to be soft in consistency now since it is soft therefore it can be easily removed and the reason why it is soft is because it must be containing a lot of decomposed and denatured organic material which is very different from our normal hard tooth now coming to affected dentine now this appears to be a dark area so it is dark in color it appears to be hard and because it is hard, so therefore it is difficult to remove. And microscopically, it has been observed that this area contains very little or no bacteria. I described the two types of dentines in form of a tabulated form, so it becomes very easy to compare and understand. Coming first to the location, infected dentine forms the outer layer of the involved dentine. Affected forms the inner layer of the involved dentine. Then the color, it is whitish yellow in color, affected is dark brown in color. Texture, infected is soft, mushy in consistency in which explorer tip can easily pass through. 
affected dentin is hard leathery in consistency now coming to composition it is composed of demineralized dentin with irreversibly denatured collagen fibers that means they cannot be repaired now this is composed of partially demineralized dentin with reversibly denatured collagen fiber now this is the main difference you can regenerate this area now bacteria are present and no bacteria are present in affected dentin now what is the outcome or the fate of this it is not non remineralizable therefore it should be removed now this is remineralizable therefore it should be preserved now during cavity preparation when you remove the topmost layer you can feel it with the explorer only that after removing the infected layer when you reach the affected layer you see that the texture of the dentine completely changes now it does not come off with the explorer easily or with a spoon excavator easily and it is dark in color so you automatically come to know that we have reached the affected dentine and we should stop our going deeper and our cavity preparation should stop right here however at times it may be difficult to judge clinically how much dentine is to be removed now this can be managed with application of 1% solution of acid red in propylene glycol this dye stains irreversibly the denatured collagen so the infected dentine it gets stained and it should be removed now initially it can help you after that after some time you just understand from the feel of it that you have removed the infected infected dentine and you have reached the affected dentine i hope you enjoyed your lecture and found it informative do like this video share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel thank you